I can do one more quick little thing if you want. Okay, drummer zone. We lost Neil Peart this week. Total drag for me. Uh, I knew Neil not really well, but I knew him. He was a great person. An excellent man. Excellent man. He was very excellent at everything he did. S really, really attempting to do everything at a high level. And I just want to do a little tribute to him by talking about something that I stole from him <laughs> that he would laugh at. There was two really big things that I took out of Neil's playing. Other than his immense ability to orchestrate uh, within the song. And one of the things that was great about Neil was he was writing all the lyrics for Rush, right? So he knew the story that was being told very intimately, knew the story, and he would orchestrate very well around that, all different things from electronic sounds to back in the day, all the or uh, orchestral percussion things. From a drumming standpoint, there was a couple really th big things that, st that stood out to me. The first was he used the crown of the cymbal to add a second melodic structure to a beat. What I mean by that, if you and I just started to play a beat and we were playing, like, let's say, eighth notes on the ride cymbal as, as the motion, right, he would go to the crown and create an entirely new counter melody in the drum part on the on the crown of the ride cymbal. So let me give you an example of not doing it and then adding it. So you can see what happens is some of the accents I'm playing uh, I break out of a basic rhythm of maybe eighth notes, and then I go to an accent pattern or a syncopated eighth note pattern, and, but move all the accents to the crown of the ride. That's one of the things that Neil did a lot. You'll hear it in YYZ. You'll hear it in Tom Sawyer. You'll hear a bunch of different places. The other thing that I, that I got from Neil a lot was a lot of people would play drum fills, and once they committed to a drum fill, there wasn't a cymbal involved, really, until the very end, maybe, right? Like one at the end. So got a ba da da ba da 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 blah 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 bang right? There's your cymbal. He began to add cymbals and, and like little cymbal stabs right in the middle of drum fills. And uh, I'll give you an example of that. I'll, I'll not do it, and then I'll add it. So you can see how I start to add like a cymbal with a kick drum right in the middle of the fill, right? Like I hadn't really heard that much before. So that kind of led me to use the cymbals inside of uh, fill ideas more than I did before. So you might hear me do things like this, and it's something I got from Neil Peart. So there's a lot of interplay going on in the symbols in some of those ideas, and it's something that really stemmed out of listening to Neil back in the day, listening to the drum solo section of Tom Sawyer uh, in YYZ, um, all over the place. In 2112, he really started to do that. Like he had a lot of Tom, so he would start up here, you know, right? That was, I just never had heard that really like that before. It was sort of like if I went into a fill, then it was a fill and I ended on a symbol. But to use them inside of it was something new. And then, of course, the stuff we talked about on the crown and adding those little melodies in. So 
Uh, we're going to miss Neil Peart. He was a huge influence on many, many of us, and I certainly wouldn't be sitting here playing uh, like I do today if it wasn't for his artistry. So hats off to him, and uh, thanks to you, Drummer Zone, for joining me, and maybe try some of those awesome little Neil Peart tricks in your own playing. <laughs>